Right now, Navitas Semiconductor, ticker NVTS, is trading at $10.19, and it is down another 2.54% in early morning trading. That's on top of a brutal, soul-crushing two-day collapse. But that intraday price, that 2.5% drop, is just the final aftershock of an earthquake that has completely reset the entire story for this company. What we are witnessing is the violent, painful collision between a beautiful, long-term technology narrative and a short-term reality that is nothing short of disastrous. This isn't a dip. For many, this is a complete crisis of faith, and it all happened in the span of about 48 hours. Let's be honest about what the expectation was. For the last year, and especially the last six months, the story around Navitas was one of explosive, almost euphoric promise. Investors, especially the retail community, weren't just buying a stock, they were buying a ticket to the next generation of power. They saw a company that was a pure play on gallium nitride GAN and silicon carbide CIC technology. This wasn't some boring old world silicon chip maker, this was the future. The expectation was that Navitas's tech would be in everything. Their GANFast chips would power every new mobile phone fast charger. Their Genie Sick products would be the critical heart of every electric vehicle's onboard charger, every solar inverter, and the grand prize, every single power-hungry AI server in the new data center boom. The hype was electric. You had chat rooms and social media threads filled with people who had bought in at $1.50 or $2, riding this stock all the way up to $17 just a couple of weeks ago. The partnership with NVIDIA, the name dropping of AI, it was the perfect story. The expectation was that the Q3 earnings, which just came out on Monday, would be the next rocket fuel injection, confirming the company's unstoppable growth. And then reality arrived. On Monday, November 3rd, Navitas reported its numbers and the narrative that so many had invested in simply evaporated. The company missed on earnings per share. It missed on revenue. But that wasn't the kill shot. The kill shot was the guidance. Management came out and guided for fourth quarter revenue of just $7 million, plus or minus a tiny bit. The analysts on Wall Street, the ones who were supposed to be modeling this, were expecting over $10 million. That's not a miss. That's a catastrophic failure of visibility. The stock immediately fell over 9% in after-hours trading. Then, on Tuesday, the selling continued, a wave of panic as the broader market digested the news, and it cascaded, dropping another 14% to close at $10.46. And here we are today, Wednesday morning, and the sellers are still in control, pushing it down again. The dream is, for now, completely broken. What's really happening here is a story of a company in a desperate pivot, and it's a pivot that almost no one saw coming. The new CEO, Chris Alexandre, is essentially torching the old business model. He calls it Navitas 2.0. What this really means is that they are admitting the business that got them here, the low-power, high-volume mobile charger market, especially in China, is a dead end. They are deprioritizing it, which is corporate speak for it's a low-margin, commoditized nightmare, and we can't compete. So they are intentionally letting that revenue collapse. That's what that $7 million guidance represents, the death of the old story. The new story, Navitas 2.0, is to focus only on the high-power, high-margin prizes, the data centers, the EVs, the industrial and solar markets. This sounds great, right? This is what investors wanted. But here is the devastating reality check buried in the earnings call. Management was forced to admit that they don't expect to see material or significant revenue from these new AI data center projects until 2027. Not 2025, 2027. This is the tension that is ripping the stock apart. The retail investor community is in a state of shock. Go on any forum and you see the emotional fallout. You see people who were just recently posting screenshots of their 500% gains now asking, what happened? Is the company lying? Is this manipulation? There's a deep sense of betrayal. They feel like the story was changed on them overnight, and in a way, it was. They bought into a high-growth narrative, and they were just handed a jam tomorrow story that requires them to wait three more years for the real growth to even begin, all while the current revenue base disintegrates. There's anger. There's panic. You see comments like, thank God I sold at $14, right next to people saying, I'm holding this for 10 years, this is the future, and others just posting, I'm ruined. This is the human cost of a narrative collapse. And then let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes, because the retail crowd wasn't the only one playing this game. 
The institutional side of this is fascinating. 13F filings from the most recent quarter before this earnings crash showed that institutions were actually increasing their positions. Big names like Vanguard and BlackRock are the top holders. They were buying into the hype too, or at least buying into the long-term technology story. But there was another, much smarter group of players at this table, the short sellers. As of mid-October, Navitas had an absolutely massive short interest. Over 45 million shares were sold short. That's 29.22% of the entire float. To put that in perspective, the average for its peers is under 10%. This wasn't a small group of bears. This was a dedicated, heavily capitalized trading army betting that that $17 valuation was a fantasy. That the AI hype was just that, hype and that the company's actual numbers would eventually disappoint. When that fourth quarter guidance hit the wire, it was their I told you so moment. They have made an absolute fortune in the last 48 hours, and they were right for a reason. They saw the weakness in the mobile market that the hype was concealing. The volatility is just staggering. We've seen volume spike to 30, 40, 50 million shares a day, which is multiples of its average. This is not investing. This is a war zone. You have panic-selling retail investors colliding with short sellers who are cashing in and taking their profits. You have algorithmic trading systems just liquidating positions based on the stock breaking key technical levels, like its 50-day and 200-day moving averages. And somewhere in that mess, you have the true long-term believers, the ones who actually understand GAN and CIC, trying to decide if this $10 price tag is the buying opportunity of a lifetime or a terrifying value trap. The technicals are, to put it mildly, horrific. The Relative Strength Index RSI is deep in oversold territory, but that doesn't matter in a news-driven crash. Every single moving average that traders use for support has been sliced through like it wasn't even there. What's so confusing for many is the analyst response. This is where the expectation reality disconnect gets even wider. Just yesterday, after this catastrophic guidance, an analyst at Needham raised their price target on Navitas from $8 all the way up to $13. Their logic? They believe in the Navitas 2.0 story. They see the pivot to high-margin data centers as a massive long-term positive and are essentially willing to ignore the next year of terrible revenue. They are buying the new narrative, hook, line, and sinker. At the exact same time, an analyst at Rosenblatt, looking at the exact same data, cut their price target from $12 down to $8 and downgraded the stock to neutral. Their logic? The execution risk is now massive, the data center revenue is too far away, and there is zero visibility. So, who do you believe? The bull who sees a $13 stock or the bear who sees an $8 stock, all while it's trading at $10.19 and falling? This is why the market is so chaotic. No one can agree on what the company is even worth anymore. Let's quickly reground ourselves in what Navitas actually does, because the technology is the one thing that hasn't changed. Navitas is a fabless semiconductor company, meaning they design the chips but don't manufacture them. They specialize in next-generation power semiconductors. Traditional chips are made of silicon. Navitas chips are made from gallium nitride, GAN, and silicon carbide, CIC. The advantage is simple. GAN and CIC are dramatically more efficient. They can handle higher voltages, switch faster, and lose less energy as heat. This allows you to build power supplies, charges, and inverters that are smaller, lighter, charge faster, and waste less electricity. The applications are without a doubt a multi-billion dollar opportunity. In data centers, which are consuming a terrifying amount of the world's electricity to power AI, switching to GAN and CIC could save billions in energy costs. In electric vehicles, it can make the car charge faster and go further on a single charge. The market is real. The technology is real. The problem is, as Navitas is so painfully demonstrating, turning that technology into a profitable business. This company is still burning cash at an alarming rate. Its net margin is negative 338%. It is not profitable and isn't expected to be for a long time. It survives by selling stock and raising capital. And now it has to do that while its core revenue stream is in freefall. This is the ultimate risk for investors. They are betting on a story, a technological promise, and they need to fund the company's losses for years until that promise maybe becomes a reality. After this week, the patience of many of those investors has run out. So what happens now? What are the possible scenarios? The bear case is simple. This is just the beginning. 
the Navitas 2.0 pivot fails. The competition, which includes giants like Infineon and ST Microelectronics, beats them to the punch in data centers and EVs. The company is forced to keep raising cash, diluting shareholders, and the stock slowly bleeds out back to the $2 or $3 where it started. The short sellers were right, and this week's crash was just the market waking up. The bull case, the one that requires a stomach of steel, is that this is the perfect washout moment. This is the moment of maximum pain and maximum pessimism. The company has ripped off the band-aid, ditched the low-margin business it never should have been in, and is now laser-focused on the real prize. The bulls, like the Needham analyst, say this is the time to be brave. This is the time to accumulate shares from the panicking retail sellers knowing that in 2027, when Natitas is a key supplier to the AI industry, this $10 price will look like a distant dream. I'm genuinely curious what the people who have held on think. Comment below if you sold